Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Scotland. Better said, I'm at the distillery called Bunhaben. Bunhaben, a Fass Eil, um, 2009 edition. This was actually the um, Monet or the Moigny. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. French oak finish, natural color, non-chilled filtered, um, 1,872 bottles. I have bottle number 662, and this is bottled at 57.4%. Now, um, the great thing about this bottle is we know about everything you can know about it, um, except for one important, for me at least, important fact. All right, we know the ABV, 57.4%. We know that it was actually um, 10 years old, and then they took it away, and they had at least a five-month-plus finish here in French oak hogshead. It says so itself on the back, actually. It says here, um, under the watchful eye of our senior blender, Dr. Christy McCallum, a 10-year-old um, Bunhaben Muni, was singled out from one of our eight warehouses overlooking the Sound of Isla. Recently rejuvenated French oak hogs heads were chosen to enhance the peated note of this exquisite whis whiskey, and the result is this full-bodied, 11-year-old single malt full of rich, oily wood spice, sweet smoke, and a creamy mouthfeel. Ooh, marketing. All right, so we know that this was actually um, distilled on the 7th of February, 2008. We know that it was bottled on the 11th of February, 2019. So exactly 11 years and four days. So tiny little information, a bit of information about Bunahabin. Bunahabin means the source of the river. The river in this case is the Margadale. And um, if you go back in history, up until 2003, Bunahabin belonged to the Erdingen um, group. McAllen, um, Highland Park, and so on, and they actually wanted to shut it down. And they had been just using it every once in a while, up and from 1999 to about 2003. And then the knight in shining armor came and saved them, and that was Burn Stewart. Burn Stewart, um, 2003 and two, until 2013, so they ran the distillery for um, 10 years, also the time period that this was made. And then in 2013, a new company came and bought it, more financial reasons than anything else. That was the Distill Group from South Africa, and they now still own it today. All right, so this cost, and this was a Whiskey Exchange exclusive. At least I only saw it on the Whiskey Exchange. I have seen a few bottles here in Germany at a much, much higher rate. So I have the feeling they bought it at the Whiskey Exchange. They put 20% overhead on it and tried to sell it to the German public. So this is actually going for 99, 95 pounds. So 99 quid or 100 quid, if you like to say that. So in my terms, that's about 125, 130 um, euros with postage and duties and blah, blah, blah. And so, um, yeah. Why did I buy this? I forgot that Muni means peated whiskey. <laughs> I bought some New Riff, and I was like, okay, I got six bottles of New Riff. Now what else? Oh, look, that's a great, that's a great sale. Oh, 99 pounds. Oh, looks great. And I'll buy it. And then later I was like, wait a second. I said Bunahabin uh, Muni. Oh, I'm not the peat head. I'm so sorry. All right. So um, a year ago, I would have went Igid. Maybe in two years from now, I'm going to go, oh. And at the moment, I'm going, oh, this is interesting. Let's continue on. All right. So first of all, the nose. The nose is a very, very sweet wood. I get sweet oil. I get sweet wood. I get sweet car caramel. And of course, I get peat, a sweet peat. All right, let's see what they say here. They say rich oak. Now, I do get some oak. It's more like you're at the um, do-it-yourself at the um, construction store or the hardware store or Lowe's, as we would say, where I came from, Virginia. They just cut some wood, and you can actually smell it. Um, it says here um, rich oak, vanilla, caramel, or caramel. Um, hints of um, iodine, which I never have gotten yet, at least not in this one, and also a peppery spice. Now, I'm getting a little bit the peppery is for me, alcohol. Now, don't forget it's 57.4% ABV, yeah? All right, very, very good. All right, let's try this. I'm going to nip it and then put some water in, then I'll figure this out, okay? Now, it's not below the shoulder. I'm sorry. It's, one, it's my first sip of this, but I do know I need water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
The first thing that really impresses me, creamy, oily, sweet peat, um, a vanilla with a wood moment. I wouldn't nail it to a oak, but I would call it a nice oak moment, a nice wood moment. So creamy mouthfeel is what they say. Rich oils, very good. Wood, wood spice, vanilla, hints of berries, hmm. um, roasted nuts. Now, I haven't gotten those yet, but I went put water in this, and this is what happened in my German video was I got roasted peanuts. It was just, I read through it, nah, no nuts. And it was like, wait, I got peanuts. I got roasted peanuts. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, roasted non-salted peanuts. Mm -hmm. And it's balanced with a full-body peppery smoke. And that, that alcohol is really there. Now, um... I mentioned everything, we know everything about this whiskey except for one thing. What type of sherry cask? Sherry is not sherry. We have Pedro Jimenez, we have Ololoso, we have many other types of, of sherries, uh, Palo Cortado, and, 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 and. Um, doesn't say. Now, I was watching uh, Roy just the other evening um, from Aquaviti, and he had Charles um, on his show, let me make sure I get his name right here, I'm not such a bad person, Charles McLean, and um, Roy asked the question of, hey, why do we even have sherry hogsheads? Hogsheads, and he started telling what I always say, hogsheads are five American standard barrels that come to in Scotland, we break them apart, or they're already breaking apart, broken apart because we put them in the container, and we bring them over to save space, and then we rebuild the, out of the five. We make four, we put new heads and um, bottoms on there, and ta-da, we have a hog's head. We have four made from the staves of five. And um, Charles McLean kind of navigated around that question, but I just was thinking to myself, and I didn't say this, but I will maybe contact Roy one day. Don't forget, we have seasoned casks which means they're made on order. You want a punchin? I'll make you a punchin. You want a butt? I'll make you a butt. You want a hogshead? I'll make you a hogshead. And we'll put the seasoned cherry in there, we'll let it sit for a year, and then send it to you, maybe with a little bit of juice still in there. That's the way things are at the moment, all right? Now, what's very, very interesting about this was, this was a rejuvenated French oak hogshead. So, something had been in it before, and they rejuvenated. What does it mean? They scrape out that char and they rechar that. They maybe toast it, maybe they don't. We don't know exactly. And so what I would really, really want to know is, hey, give me some more information about that wood. Now, um, Charles McLean, and he said this, and he said, really, it's not important if it's a sherry cask or if it's an American um, bourbon barrel or if it's a um, brandy barrel or anything else for that matter. What's important is what type of wood is it American oak or is it European oak? Because they taste totally different. And this is actually going, so the European is going with the French oak. For me, a, like a type of limousine oak, oak, which we know from cognac. Very difficult to get today. Very expensive. White oak from America is like a 25%, so 75% cheaper than the European oak at the moment, according to my information I've heard from the industry. All right, so one last time with a little bit of water added to this. I try to get it down to 46 to 48%. That's my drinking ABV at the moment with such a whiskey. Very, very nice. Um, very, very sweet, very oily. Um, Bart from the Scotch Chess Dummies uh, did the Aqua Vita Blind Challenge, and I think his leading whiskey was the Scarapus. Scarabus, um, Scarabus, Scarabus, I think it's called. And many, many people over here in Germany said, oh, we love that. That's great. That's Bunahabin. And I have no idea if it's Bunahabin or not, but it smells very similar to this, and I liked it as well. That was one of the best, cheaper whiskeys I've ever had, to be honest, with, which was from Isla, which was peated. All right. So, Slanchen to your health. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Getting the peanuts now, the roasted peanuts. Still oily, still creamy. Still a very, very nice 
taste and mouthfeel. A lot of viscosity. Mm, even with water in there. Very, very nice. Um, in my German video, I give this like a C plus plus. I'm going to give it maybe even a B minus minus. Now, the only thing that's, um, that kept me from giving it a B minus in my German video, it's the same thing now. It's still that ABV. It's so peppery. It's hot. It's hot, hot. Um, it's It's got some youth to it, all right? 11 years is not a very old whiskey, at least not in my book for scotch. Now, um, I know many people like the scotch young, and this is what it is, but then I don't want it that hot. Um, then take it down to 46 to 48 percent, and I'm happy. Value for money, and this is my little bit of my trigger point. I think this is too expensive from my point of view at the moment. Now, I am not the expert in Bunahaben, cast strength, um, peated whiskeys, and the prices. But my gut feeling says, I think there are some independent bottlers out there where I can get this a very similar, not with a French oak, but a very similar um, product for um, $40, 50, 40 euros less. And therefore, I'm going to give this basically a C minus for value for money. So why, A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. So I gave it a B minus minus. So yes, um, C minus, you can buy it. D, don't have to buy it. And F, why was it even made? Huh. Um, this is a well-made whiskey. There's a lot of that oak. There's a little bit of that sweetness. There's a lot of the oils in there. And that smoke just kind of integrates everything and coats everything. And it's a very, very well-made whiskey. This is one of those whiskeys that I would love to be in the warehouse. But 39 degrees outside and raining. And you take a little pour of this in the warehouse. You can see your breath. You're holding your glass. You're doing this. And then you... Oh, that's the perfect moment. Now, um, unfortunately, I have a nice, warm, dry studio here, and I don't have to worry about that. Um, but this whiskey is not just a wow whiskey for me. This is a good whiskey, but it's not blowing my socks off. All right. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Bunahabin whiskey? Um, I actually have, if not the, probably one of my most favorite um, Bunahabin whiskeys. This is the legendary Pedro Jimenez limited release here from um, Warehouse Number 8 with 54.3%. Um, this was a 14-year-old whiskey. Mm. And the interesting thing for me was um, the Pedro Jimenez, um, the casks did not overpower the whiskey, but yet um, gave the whiskey a turbo lift forward. Well said, Jason. All right, so I really did. This was one of the, I think this is the best Buna I've ever had in my life. Uh, the Buna 18 should be fabulous. I still haven't had it. And the Buna 12 is also very nice, plus a lot of the other additions out there. All right, please write down in the, um, in the comments, if you'd be so kind, what is your favorite um, product from Buna Haben? All right, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, and telling others about this crazy guy in Europe tasting rare. One of 1,872 bottles. And I will see you hopefully on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays here on this channel. All the best. Bye-bye.